timer from the fridge right there. Hey, hi, Lisa Marie here. Thank you. And Todd. We are going to start reading a new book called I'll Start Again Monday by Lisa Turkhurst. And what's nice about it is it is actually really cool. The little subtitle here, Breaking the Cycle of Unhealthy Eating Habits with Lasting Spiritual Satisfaction. Hello, is that what you want? That's what I want, for sure. So I'm gonna set the timer, kinda do what I did before, read for five minutes, and then chit chat about what was just read for about five minutes. Unless this just says it like it is, and we don't need to do that, then I'll read for the whole 10 minutes. But otherwise, we'll set the timer for five and we'll go from there. All right, here we go. Kind of the, what do you call it? The dedication to the girl with the weary heart who feels so very alone in this struggle that seems like it will never end. Let me be the friend who comes along you alongside you to say, you are seen. You are loved. You are prayed for. Jesus is with you and so am I. We can do this. So let's link arms and face this journey together. Amen. Introduction. <clears throat> Finding your quote, want to, unquote, a typical book on healthy lifestyle choices should contain lots of talk on vegetables, calories, colon cleanses, and phrases like you must and you should. I have a problem with all that talk. It's not the how to I'm missing, it's the want to. Really wanting to make lasting changes and deciding that the results of those changes are worth the sacrifice. In light of this admission, I think it's only appropriate to be honest with you about a few things right up front. One, I am emotionally allergic to typical books on healthy eating. Me too. Number two, not once in my life have I ever craved a carrot stick. Number three, I am not overly excited about giving up two of the greatest delights of my taste buds, Cheez-Its and box mix brownies. In fact, I've asked God if it would be such a terribly difficult thing to swap the, mo <laughs> the molecular structure of Cheez-Its for carrot sticks. They're both already orange and really, how hard could that be for someone who's turned water into wine? Number four, I wasn't sure I had any business writing a book like this. I'm a simple Jesus girl on a journey to finding deeper motivation than just a number on my scale for getting and staying healthy. I'm not writing this book to beat your taste buds into submission or because I've discovered the magic diet to get you skinny by tomorrow. I'm writing this book because I've struggled way too long with my food choices and my weight because I've said, I'll start again Monday, a thousand times, only to disappoint myself by breakfast. And word on the street says, most of my girlfriends fight this draining, dissatisfying cycle day in and day out as well. Which brings me to the fifth thing we should know about me. Number five, I started this journey weighing 167 pounds. To some, this is a horrifying high number. To others, 167 is a dream weight. In my case, the number itself was not the issue. The issue was how I felt mentally, spiritually, and physically. It was time to be honest with myself. I think we all get to a place in our lives when we have to give a brutally honest answer to the question, how am I doing? It's not really a conversation we have with a friend or a family member. It's one of those middle of the night com contemplations when there's no glossing over the realities staring us in the face. 
I knew certain things about myself needed to change, but it was easier to make excuses than it was to tackle them head on. Rationalizations are so appealing. See if you relate to any of these. I'm good on every other area. I make so many sacrifices already. I need treats as a comfort in this season of my life. I'll deal with my issues later. The Bible doesn't specifically say this is wrong. If I really wanted to make a change, I could. I just don't want to right now. Oh, for heaven's sake, everyone has issues. So what if this is mine? But excuses got me nowhere fast, especially when it came to healthy eating. A whole lifetime could be spent giving in to excuses, feeling guilty, resolving to do better, mentally beating myself up for not sticking to my resolve, and then resigning myself to the fact that things can't change. There's a lot more in the introduction. So I am gonna stop there and I'm gonna mark where we are. <gasps> do you relate? I do, I totally do. And are you like so excited that she said, we are thought of, we are seen you you, you are seen and you are prayed for. I know not just by me, but by the Holy Spirit. I just, I just know it. I believe it all day long. And then we can do this. So let's link arms and face this journey together. I really think that was awesome. And can you relate to her and the things that we needed to know about her and how we really need to find that want to, the want to and deciding that we want to make lasting changes that result in a lifelong health journey, not just a momentary moment in time or for a smaller, short, short amount of time. I think that was awesome. And can any of you relate to any of her admissions? <laughs> I love the first one about being allergic to typical books on healthy eating. I never thought of it that way, but how true is that? So many of them just don't fit with the bariatric world for sure. And we all know it. We all know it. I know it. We know it. We know that there's only three things that give us calories. There's only one way to measure fat. There's only one way to measure protein. There's only one way to measure carbs. We all know that the amount of food we take in and the amount of fitness we do out is what will give or take our up or down of the scale, right? We all know that. However, I think what she's getting going to be getting into is like the front says, it's breaking that cycle of the unhealthy eating habits with lasting spiritual satisfaction. And I really like that. And I love the fact that she said, I have totally thought this, that no one's ever craved a carrot. And that's why I thought about it because I, I used to, I used to crave carrots. I think I liked the crunch and I liked that they kind of gave me a yellow on my lips or orange, whatever. I know I'm weird. But the fact that she said she prayed to God asking if he could take, change the molecular structure of Jesus to be that of a carrot. That was pretty stinking funny because mm, I thought things like that too. And then I really like that she just kind of confesses she's not anybody special in this. I am not anybody special in this bariatric world by any means. I'm just that girl on that journey sharing it with you. Now sharing it with her with us because I think it's amazing. And have you ever said that? Have you ever said I will start Monday? I'll start again Monday or I'll start again tomorrow and then something happens like before breakfast that's happened to me <laughs> too many times and what did you think about her number that her her journey right that she started right now was at 167 and how many of us that's a horrifying amount especially if you are in the 120s even the 130s 
to think 167 is like, oh, I don't ever want to be there or I don't want to be there again. But for those of us who have started in the 300s or more and are maybe now stuck in our 200s or our upper 100s, isn't 167 like a dream number? I can totally relate. I can totally relate. And I love that she said it, it isn't it isn't the number. It is the issue was how I felt mentally, spiritually, and physically. And it was time to be honest with myself. Ah. Hey Carol, good to see you. And Lori, gosh, I, I now I can see people's names. And Tanya, hi, and Nella. Oh my gosh, Marie, Valerie, Christine, Gwen, Tammy, Corey. Oh, it's so good to see you all. And how about those little comments that she said too of rationalizations or excuses? How many of us have done that? We've rationalized our whole journey, or I have, my adult, whole adult life, with, well, I'm good in other areas. I've actually said that one. And I make so many sacrifices already. Hmm. I need treats as a comfort in this season of my life. I'll just deal with it later. And the, oh my gosh, this was the one that hit me too. Well, the Bible doesn't specifically say this is wrong. I've been there too. And if I really wanted to make a change, I could. I just don't want to make it right now. Ah, that one was an ouch. Because I think that's where any of us who've had a regain or a stall or just the weight loss journey itself as a beginning, it really, 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 really takes for us to really want it and to want it now and to make that decision now. There you have it. That's been 10 minutes and we just stopped a little bit here on, oh, she has some Roman numerals, 11, uh, that I think that's where we'll pick up tomorrow, putting my bookmarker in here. And we will read a little bit more tomorrow, chat a little bit more about it, and we will see how far we go. So if you want to order it, I got it on Amazon. I don't remember. $11. It's tiny. I mean, look. It's like kind of the size of my head. It's not that big. It's not that thick. You know, it looks like it's going to be an easy read, but it's I'll start again Monday by Lisa with a Y, Turkhurst. Amazing. And I'm looking forward to getting out of this unhealthy eating habits with lasting spiritual satisfaction. I hope you are too. Tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Yes, I should be able to have lunchtime like normal about 1230 again. I'll see you then. Have a great rest of your day. Love ya.